What's up, guys? It's NFL week one around the corner, and I've got one of the sharpest betters and DFS players in the business to break it all down. We got bets, we got DFS, we got John Stat Stational Alessia. This is the game plan. <laughs> Right. We are back. It is NFL week one. We're talking bets. Week one bets are a little tricky, John. Sensational Alessia. We don't really know what's going on. Used to be the easiest week of the year to bet, actually. It was week one. It's really? changed a little. Yeah, it's changed a little bit. Well, the problem is because you, like most people, bet thinking you know something, but most people don't know anything. That's why preseason, you look at the Sharp app. I crushed it in the preseason. I usually dominate preseason and everybody goes, well, only degenerates play preseason football as if everyone else knows in week five exactly what what's going to happen. So there are certain trends. There's certain things to look at in preseason and in the first week of the season that uh, can make you profitable. But yeah, most people look and they're like, oh, I don't know what to expect. Well, I don't know what to expect either. But I just know historically we're looking for value and you can find some value on certain spots in week one. And that has been profitable over the years. Do you know if unders really hit at a higher rate in week one? Teams are rusty. Yeah, I mean, that's another narrative. Not typically. It depends on the year. I actually, so in, in college football, I've been looking for unders to start the year and that's been very good it's generally because of rule changes and some things that they're doing a little bit differently in college i haven't noticed anything necessarily in the nfl that's going to lead me to believe um that's pushing me towards unders or overs i just have more of a gut feel that we've seen the totals come down over the last few years and the league is just very cyclical i think we've hit a bottom on totals i think we will probably see totals higher so if i had a blindly bet when one way or the other i would say we'll probably get more overs this weekend than not but i don't have anything really concrete it's not something that I'm going to uh, action. But if uh, you put a gun to my head, I'll take the overs this week. Yeah, I like that thought. I, I'll take the overs this year, I, all year. I think in general, we've seen the last couple of years that the totals, the team totals have been coming down. Last year, we went a whole year with almost never seeing games going over 50 on the projection. And I just think a lot of that was because all the in, the quarterbacks have been getting hurt and you've gotten terrible quarterback play in the NFL literally for multiple years in a row. I think that's changing this year. We don't really have the terrible QBs right now. It's hard to think of very many quarterbacks that are absolute trash cans. I mean, there's a couple, but it's a lot better than we've seen before. So as long as the injury bug doesn't rear its ugly head, I think we'll get more scoring this year than we've seen in the past. So we'll see. All right. Focus of this show, though, is the Sunday main slate. We're going to, you know, if you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, we're talking Sunday games primarily. We're going to talk about some bets, some some best bets, some we'll, we'll even talk a little bit of props. We've got the, the sharp prop optimizer loaded up in the background here. Talk about some potential prop plays for Sunday against the spread bets. I've got a couple, but only a couple personally for this week that I've locked in on so far and we'll dive into John Statsation Alessia's brain and get all the details out of there. We're gonna pull them out, John. So let's just get started with the first game on the Sunday slate. That is the Cardinals taking on the Bills at the Bills. Bills are six and a half point favorite, 48 point total in this one. Some noteworthy things about this game in general. Of course, the Cardinals have added Marvin Harrison Jr. Cardinals have looked really good as a running team under this coaching staff with Tyler Murray and James Connor as the combo. The rushing has looked great. The receiving didn't look that great last season. The passing game in general was a little bit flat, but part of that was because they didn't have any pass catchers that were any good. The emergence of Trey McBride last season, hopefully we'll see that continue this year for the purposes of my fantasy football teams that I loaded up on Trey McBride. But that's about it for the changes. Starting wide receivers for the Cardinals sh should be Michael Wilson and Greg Dortch alongside, of course, the rookie Marvin Harrison Jr. Then on the flip side on the Bills, also kind of a new look Bills team. They got rid of Gabriel Davis, got rid of Stefan Diggs, and now the pass catchers are, you know, a rookie, Keon Coleman. You've got K-Shack, Khalil Shakir, who looks like the top guy, and they brought in free agent Curtis Samuel, who I do think will have a significant role playing his little gadget type plays that not much going on at running back. There is some excitement about the rookie, I'm going to say the name is Ray Davis, as being sort of a goal line type of guy. We'll see how much usage he gets relative to James Cook, and you know, Josh Allen is a 20 plus point fantasy scoring machine year in and year out. Nothing wrong there. So let's start with this line, John. Bills are six and a half point favorites at home. Do you have any feelings about that? I mean, you're usually an, uh, you know, uh, an underdog guy. Yeah, typically I like to play the dogs. 
This is one of the I've I liked quite a few games this week. This is not one of the games that I like. We're not seeing anything on the Sharp Report. For those who are familiar with the Sharp app, we've got a report where we get uh, some information from a book that we know where the Sharp money's coming in. We have access to see where the squares are playing and really no action you know, on this game by the uh, by the public or the Sharp money. So we're not seeing a whole lot there. As far as the market, it opened up at seven. It's actually dropped a bit off the seven. This was you know way back when, when they opened the price on this one. It opened up at seven and the total has pretty much stayed at 48. So it's just not a game I like. I've been hearing a lot of people, I put out my futures bet and I do have futures bets on Buffalo to win the Super Bowl. And I'm not sure if I took the over. I'd, I'd have to go back and look. I think I might have the over on their, their wins as well. But some people are down. They feel like the personnel has changed a bit on Buffalo. They weren't as good last year. They feel like they're on the downswing. I'm not seeing it. The, my model doesn't see it. I'm pretty bullish on the bills. I mean, if you're worried about Diggs not being there, I don't think this team changes one bit without Diggs. Um, and typically wide receivers don't have that big of an app impact. It depends on the wide receiver, you know, outside of a, a Jefferson or a Lamb or a Chase, something like that. They're not moving the line, maybe at uh, Tyreek Hill, but outside of the handful of guys, they're not moving the line much. So uh, Diggs moving from Buffalo, if Diggs was playing in this game, the, the line would be six and a half. So I'm not terribly concerned with uh, with the personnel here with the Bills. You still got one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I think that propels them to win the division. Um, I'm not as high on the Jets and we'll get to them. But yeah, so as far as this game goes, not a whole lot of movement yet. We're not seeing the Sharps really attack this game. I think this one's pretty neutral. For those in uh, Survivor Pools, of course, this is an option, taking Buffalo at home. Uh, I was going to say, I was just yeah. about to ask you about Survivor, and is this one of the games that stand out? I do think everybody's going to be on Cincinnati, which kind of finds something different. So Buffalo, right? As a alternative week one Survivor play. As far as DFS goes, there's a couple of spots here that are interesting in this game. Of course, you don't really know which of the wide receivers is going to emerge for the Bills. All three of them, I would say, are very much viable, but I think the best pass catcher sort of on paper is probably Dalton Kincaid to pair up with Josh Allen. One of the things we learned in back testing this year, John, and you know, in DFS Army, we do a lot of back tests, try to figure out trends and things that repeat themselves. And one of the things we discovered was it is good, especially in like a cash game or any sort of environment where you just want to lock in the points um, to just pay up and have the stud quarterback of the slate on your team. Josh Allen, I think only he was like 75% of the time over 20 fantasy points last season. And he averaged something in the range of, you know, I'll pull up the actual number. It was 26 fantasy points per game. There it is last year. So Josh Allen, a very safe cash game quarterback in week one, and he's an inexpensive stack. You could just pair him up with Kincaid and one of those K Shack or Curtis Samuel or even the rookie Keon Coleman. No worries right there. So really easy to stack in DFS. And I think even James Cook, the running back is mildly interesting uh, here as well. It's hard to say how much usage he's going to get this year. He really was not a touchdown scorer last season, had a couple of big PPR type performances. So he's not somebody I'm going to prioritize prioritize this week. I'll probably actually avoid him. I don't like the salary bump that DraftKings gave James Cook, who effectively never earned a score worthy of his 7K price tag pretty much all of last season. So I'm just going to make him show me that he's worth 7K before I start to believe it. I mean, just look at his returns 12, one game where he returned value against 7K last year once. So I don't like it. I don't like it, John. That's that is your prerogative. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, All right, let's move on to the second game of the slate. Another survivor special for NFL week one. Although I've got a little sneaky survivor choice for you. I know scratching and surviving is John's survivor. If you're in a survivor league, you want to follow him. And I heard you're in uh, one with uh, Sislowski, my boy. Yeah, we're in the big one together. The uh, the circus. So we'll see. That's I'm hearing that that pot's getting pretty big. They guarantee 10 million is going to be well over that. So we'll see. I think they might get 20,000 entries in that thing. A thousand yeah, a pot, so. crazy. Thousand dollar entry survivor with uh alan Sislowski. uh wise move on his part teaming up with you i like it. um all right so second game of the slate though. we've got the patriots at the Bengals. the Bengals are seven and a half point home favorites here patriots in a little bit of disarray right now you know kind of coming in with jacoby Brissett. got all the uh sort of they they elevated all their coaches they're kind of kept the team similar to what it was under belichick in terms of the coaching and all of that patriots going to want to run the football here and slow it down Brissett is in there as a game manager. Bengals probably not super likely to air it out here as well. Jamar Chase holding out at the moment. Don't know if he's going to play. Does the line tell you anything about if Jamar Chase will play? Yeah, I, I think Chase is probably out for this game. So I don't think he's going to be in. That's my anticipation here. It's tough to really determine with the line, but I do believe they would have been a, a slightly higher favorite. They did open at seven and a half. And, I, and as you're seeing over on uh, DraftKings, they're at seven and a half, but you could get this at eight and a half at some books. Caesars got it at eight and a half. 
It was nine. Um, it was nine at some point. It was nine. Yeah. Uh, and it has ticked back lower. But we'll see when you you kind of bounce in that eight to nine range fairly easily because those the game. I mean, eight is a decent number, but it's not a hugely uh, significant number. Not not quite like seven is in the NFL. So games will land on an eight, but you'll see games kind of fluctuate a little bit freer in between key numbers. So the move from like a four to a five is not nearly as significant, of course, as a move from six to seven. So just, you know, kind of keep that in mind. But yeah, this one opened. Uh, if you if you do like the favorite, like you said, you could get it at seven and a half. You could even get this at Pinnacle. I'm looking at the Sharp app now. And we've got Pinnacle now on the app. So Pinnacle's widely considered, you know, one of the sharper sports books out there. So even if you don't have access to Pinnacle, you're not putting your bets in through Pinnacle, always a good idea to kind of check out where the Pinnacle market is. And they've got this game seven and a half minus 105, minus seven and a half, that is minus 105. So it's really, they're kind of skewed towards the Patriots side of this game. They're giving you basically the best odds in the market right now on the Bengals. So <clears throat> that should tell you something. Right now, don't have a bet on this game. I would lean towards the Patriots for that reason. And I do think the Bengals are another team that I have them on the under for their win total this year. It was one of the bets I made. I think they're, again, I understand the injuries last year. I understand, you know, Burrow not being there. I don't know if that is enough uh, Burrow back to get this team over. They're, they're looking at 10 and a half on the win total. I mean, they got to get to 11 to beat me. I'll take my chances on that. So I did like them on the under. If I had to lean, like I said, Patriots in this game, I would lean towards. And as far as the total goes, I mean, this is a low total game with a fairly high spread. Excuse me. And, and the total really hasn't moved much at all off that uh, 40 and a half, 41 number. So yeah, not, not a terribly exciting game for DFS purposes. Now, yeah, both teams really likely to want to slow it down. I do have like, I, I have some interest in some spots here, but very mild. Obviously, uh, New England with Brissett, I think is better than if they had started the rookie. And I think that's maybe what pulled that line down, tightened it up a little bit because Brissett is definitely an acceptably decent NFL backup QB. Like he's a pretty, pretty, he's fine. On the Bengals side, you know, a lot of the fantasy football community, the fantasy bros, like the, the redraft bros have been very excited about Chase Brown effectively taking over for Zach Moss or at some point like overtaking him. They think Brown is better. Something about that just makes me want to play Zach Moss week one and just say YOLO it. Um, he could definitely score a touchdown here, especially, you know, the favorite Bengals, the seven and a half points, the sort of likelihood of this game being slow moving. And it, it doesn't excite me from a heavy upside point of view, but I think maybe Zach Moss is a little bit better than what people are giving him credit for. And his touchdown prop is not bad. It's pretty much as good as anybody. I think it's either somewhere around plus 100. So it's just like as good as anybody else on the slate, considering how low owned Zach Moss will probably be for DFS purposes. And if Jamar Chase is out, I think we've got to keep an eye on T Higgins on this slate as well, just because they got to throw it to someone. And if there's no chase there, it'll probably have to be T or, you know, I can't even remember. They have a new wide receiver three as well on this, on the Bengals. I can't remember who it is. So, but it's probably T. I believe Yovasis is actually going to get the start at WR3. But like I said, you know, he'll be a WR2 if Chase is out and then you'll get like Javon Baker. Uh, no, I don't even know who the, there's a rookie there that'll get a WR3, whatever. Point is T. Higg. And for the Patriots, if I needed to play a wide receiver, it's probably the rookie Jalen Polk. But, but again, this game is pretty mad across the board. All right, next up, we have a much more exciting game. And I believe the line has moved a little bit here as well since before. I want to see what I caught this bet at. But the Jaguars are at the Dolphins with the Dolphins at home installed as three and a half point favorites. 49 point total. So this is one of the higher total games on this slate, John. And, you know, Miami minus three and a half. Really interesting. I did catch them on a bet before the, the line went up here. So I have Miami at just straight winning minus 135. And that was when the line was at I believe minus two or minus two and a half. So I guess my first question is, how do you feel about taking the bet at minus 135 rather than laying the two points? And also, how do you feel about the line now? Miami, you know, is traditionally a hot starting team and the Jaguars are not. And do you factor that in at all? Uh, no, not typically. I mean, those kind of things to me, they, there's just not enough sample size. And like, you know, I mean, what are we talking about? How many years is, has Lawrence? Two. Been yeah, you know, it's, it's like a couple. And he was banged up last year. So I don't put too much weight into to, uh, into that. I mean, as far as the number that you got, obviously you beat the market. We were just talking about actually in the Discord last night. I don't, you don't even know. We had a, a little bit of a live session, very impromptu, Anthony and nice. I, and uh, we had some of the subscribers were in there, and we were just kind of going over some questions, answering questions from people. And yeah, a Anthony was just stressing how maybe the most important thing is getting the best of the line, and sometimes even more important than your handicapping uh, ability. So if, yeah, if you can beat the line, that's actually something that some pros there aren't even great handicappers. They're just really good at reading line moves and knowing which way the line's going to move. That's all they're betting. They're just betting like that line's off. I'm going to take it now before it moves. And you certainly got the best of the line here. I don't think you're going, I don't think you're going to see this line move back down to where you got it. So that's a good job right there. You basically took the juice 
out of the uh, out of the yeah, it was, uh, game. I, I don't, you know, I think that Miami's actually going to smoke these guys. I could be wrong, of course. But I think Miami's going to smoke them. There's also another statistic that showed that like the Jaguars in high total games just have a, a horrific record in terms of winning them. But more so, yeah, Miami starts hot every year. They have all those weapons healthy right now. Like this could be one of those games where I actually like the alt line. Like if Gargano was here, we'd be talking about an alt line pizza bet on this one. Like give me Miami minus seven. You know, let me take, I'll juice it up. I, I think Miami smokes these guys. I like the, I, you know, I like those bets. Certainly when you have some conviction behind it, you know, moving it up to that seven. I don't know what, I haven't looked at the alternative lines. I'm not sure where that is, but I haven't done that bet yet. Yeah. So I haven't looked at it, but whatever it is, it's juiced a lot better than it is here. And I just think we might even, you could even get crazy. Move this thing 10 points. Miami minus 10, minus nine and a half. I think they could smoke them. Yeah. I mean, I, I do like Miami too this this season and not on the Jaguars as uh, I've seen some people, uh, and I'm talking about in the futures market here. Some people have been down on Miami looking at futures. I'm not 100% sure why there. So I think Miami's going to compete in that division. I still think Buffalo is the, uh, is the team I'll, to beat. I'll give you a guess why they're down on Miami. I like, I have some knowledge. I, I don't know. My understanding is there's a thought around the league that Miami's offense was figured out a bit last season. And so people are going to want to see what happens this year. Was it truly figured out? We saw that with the Rams at one point that their offense kind of got figured out and it took them almost a full season to readjust. And now they're back to sort of what they were. But that one down year for the Rams, there was a lot of talk of just that McVay offense getting figured out a little bit. So I'm hearing a little bit of that about Miami, but I don't think you could figure out speed. Like you could figure it out all you want. When Tyreek is out there, you can't stop him. And when you're trying to stop him, that means you're dropping a safety back. And that means the running backs have open lane. So it's a tough offense to deal with, with all the speed that they have. And Jaguars defense is actually a really fast defense too. They're known as a speed defense, but I think fast offense beats fast defense. We'll see. Um, DFS angles for this game. You know, it's a tricky one for me because Miami has that running back duo that seem massively overpriced, both of them relative to the props. Neither one of them has a minus prop to score a touchdown. Most, Both of them have touch props in the 12 to 14 touches range, and they're both priced effectively as workhorses. So they'll need to be hyper efficient, which they've been in the past in order to pay off on those kind of salaries. So it's really tricky. I have GPP only. HN, Mostert, those are GPP only plays for me. John, I'm not touching those guys in sort of anything where I need a floor. And, you know, Tyreek Hill, I think is the best play of the week one slate just across the board of any player. So I'll certainly have lots of that. One thing I wanted to tell you about, and, you know, we did a lot of back testing ahead of the season. And we talked about this last year on this first episode of the game plan of how in 2022, QB plus two kind of went away and it wasn't a very popular tournament winning approach. And that, that apparently was just some noise because QB plus two came back strong in 2023. One of the things I used to talk about in 2022 was Tua with Tua, meaning like if you're going to play Tua, he literally does not run ever. So if you're going to play him as a quarterback, he absolutely needs two of his guys to carry him to uh, fantasy glory. Well, last season, what DraftKings did was they raised the price of Jalen Waddle into the absurd range of 70 mid 7k range. And it destroyed the possibility of Tua with two because Waddle was so overpriced that even if it was working, it wasn't working. Well, DraftKings has obliged us and reduced the price of Jalen Waddle to an appropriate, correct, you know, 6K or 6,200. Yeah, there we are, 6,300. Now take a look at this. Last season, Waddle, where was he? 78, 74, 77, 76. Dude was overpriced. 70 all season. One game at 6,100. But for the most part, he was mid sevens. And John, I don't know how much of this you use in your breakdown, but I like it when, I don't like it when players' salaries go higher than they were last year. I like it when they're lower, right? When a player starts to pop up too much, that means he's either going to be too popular or we're chasing some recent results more often than not. So I like where he's at now. And I think you can actually do Tua with two stacks for this game. Like it's back. It, well, I mean, uh, they were, what was it, two years ago? I think they were both, were they both like top 10 wide receivers? On uh, the I mean, team? Waddle was never that. Waddle has always been a secondary guy. I don't think he's ever had a season where he was a top. Maybe, but I don't think so. I think wide receiver one. I don't know. I was, I was hearing that yesterday. They were just going over uh, some pass catching combos that have been wide receiver ones and on the same team. There's only a, a few of them, obviously. But of course, that was the one that was mentioned. But yeah, you're right. That's a team that the stacking and the beauty with them is it's just those two guys outside yeah. of the running backs now. So yeah, it could be a running back that takes one in and they had a tight end, Jonu Smith. So maybe Jonu Smith would get like some action as well. So I'm not going to completely ignore Jonu Smith. I'm going to mention the name. He could work with Tua as well. He's cheap enough that he actually only needs the one touchdown or like a couple of big plays in order for him to sort of wind up in that nuts. So yeah, they did add Jonah Smith. It's something to pay attention to. Jaguars, the prime player that I'd be interested in in most weeks is going to be Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne, though, uh, he's a workhorse. He does everything you want. I'd 
prefer him when the team is favored. And my thought that Jaguars might get blown out kind of keeps me off of him as a safe play. But that's like personal and view in general. I'd say Travis Etienne is an acceptable running back play. Beyond that, the Jaguars have added Brian Thomas Jr. in the offseason. Rookie wide receiver looks pretty good. You know, they still got Christian Kirk in there as well. So and Evan Ingram seems to be sort of the main target getter more often than not on this team. So, you know, a couple of weapons on the Jaguars that I wouldn't mind using a bring back with an Ingram or something like that either. So definitely a lot of possibilities with that game. NFL week one. Are you taking the bet on Miami minus three and a half? And what do you think of the total? The total 49 or 49. Yeah, it's at uh, 49 now at um, in multiple places. Yeah, don't love this game. You like Miami. I'm kind of staying clear on this one as of right now. Don't really have an, uh, much of an opinion. I do like the over a little bit. So I would lean towards the over as far as the side goes. I, I think this number, it's a tough number for me, three and a half. You know, I would lean more towards the dog at the three and a half spread, but I'm going to pass on this game. It doesn't fit my typical games that I like to play for week one. You know, it's funny. B- based on the, uh, I-, I wonder if you could find this at three. I'm just going to check the sharp app here real quick, but I-, I feel like this is a bet that we might be able to find. You could get minus 120 at Caesars at the three. Oh, okay. So there it is. Yeah. I figured, I figured there'd be something there based on just this being plus 102. Um, all right. Next up, another big game for NFL week one, another bet for your boy. Got some bets, right? So the Texans are taking on the Colts. The Texans are on the road for this one. Two and a half point road favorites, 48 and a half point total here. So this is an exciting game. This is one of my favorite DFS games. I like both sides of it, but certainly on the Colts side, Anthony Richardson at 6,300 as QB. He does it all. He can run. He could throw a little bit. He is a beast out there. He's a fantasy points machine. He's like the Marab Dewash Willie of fantasy production. That's right. I threw in a UFC rep, the machine. Marab Dewash Willie fighting for the light heavyweight championship soon. But I digress. I love Anthony Richardson week one. Colts don't have a lot going on as pass catcher. You literally can't even name the guys who he's throwing to outside of Michael Pittman. I believe Josh Downs might be hurt, might not be hurt. Not sure. Colts have like five tight ends on the team that all kind of get involved. I don't want to mess with any of that. At running back, obviously Jonathan Taylor is one of the top plays on this slate. Should be massively involved in this game. Love him, but wouldn't really want to pair him up with Anthony Richardson. So those that's kind of a no-no. But you know, Michael Pittman with Richardson, maybe I guess the rookie, Adonai Mitchell. I don't know. Beyond that, right? And I don't even think that you need to pair up Richardson with two guys. Texans side, of course, they added Stefan Diggs. They added Joe Mixon. And now you have this Texans team that is pretty stacked and have almost too many weapons to choose from. I don't like it. Too many. Can't narrow them down. I don't know which ones. John, which ones am I supposed to choose? How do I yeah, know? Good, yeah, good luck you, with that. Well, how, good luck. You're supposed to tell me. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's not helpful. No, it is not. You just got to, is it Collins? Is it Dell? Is it, is it going to shock the world with Steffi Diggs? Don't know. What about the tight end? Dalton Schultz is there. There's like all of a sudden you pick the other guys and it's Schultz getting two touchdowns. Yeah, definitely a lot of mouths to feed there, but we should see points. I mean, it should be a fun game. You're right. I mean, this is how the season ended last year, or at least that's how it ended for the Colts, right? And should have really should have beat them. You know, that last drive, tough play there. They don't get the first down if you remember that game. But and that was without Richardson. We'll see. I I mean, I'm a big fan of Richardson, and we saw in just glimpses last year before he got hurt, which was unfortunate, that um he's gonna be great for fantasy. Problem is the way he plays, is he gonna keep getting banged up like that? Probably so will. And by the way, he also plays a turnover heavy style of play. This dude is gonna fumble it, he's gonna throw an interception. I watched every single snap of his in the preseason just to get the sense. And it's he looks exactly like he did last year. He's throwing slants. He's not really able to time deep balls as of yet or time sort of uh, sharp patterns. He's really just throwing slants using his athleticism. I like it, though. He's completing passes. Wasn't like, it wasn't it you that I saw on Twitter talking about uh, Jonathan Taylor having a good year with Richardson? Oh, yeah, because Zach Moss last year on the same team absolutely crushed it with Richardson at the same time. So when they were on the field together, something about that that threat of the run from Richardson opened things up for Zach, not that good Moss. Now they got Jonathan Taylor. So it's it's just a, it's a good setup for Taylor. With all that being said, John, I don't think the Colts have the offensive firepower to hang with the Texans, even at home, even the Texans on the road. This is in a dome, perfect environment for football. And the Texans are going to smoke these guys. So not, I'm very comfortable taking the Texans here. I don't mind laying the two and a half and very much, very much like the other game. If you want to get a little silly here, I think the Texans might actually blow these guys out. I think defensively, the Texans defense is one of my favorite defense choices. It's weird because I love Anthony Richardson as a quarterback and I love Texans defense in week one. It's like crazy. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm, I'm schizophrenic with this thing. Well, the, like the, the sharp side of the game is the is the Texans. They actually bet this one. I think the sharps are looking at the sharp report. I think they got this at one. Yeah, they got it at one and a half back in the end of August. So that's one, when we this game. Let me point something out about the sharp report here. Hey, it's interesting. I already cashed this Central Arkansas bet, which was awesome. But I'm going to sh- tell you something about 
about the Sharp Report. One thing, so this is the Sharp side. This is available via Sharp.app, right? The Sharp Report on Sharp App where you know what the Sharps are on. They absolutely crush closing lines on the regular. Like if there's one thing the Sharps are doing, they are crushing the closing lines. When they're hitting these numbers, it's always better than what you can get now. So these games have changed. Like Houston, again, they grabbed it at minus one and a half. It moved to minus two and a half. If you're just following along with the Sharps here, A, the Sharps are up something, I don't know, hundreds of units. I don't know where the, where the, where the tracker is on it. Yeah, plus 115 units if you're just following this, but it's just more so. I always watch this and it's always beating the closing line. So it's something to definitely pay attention to on the Sharp app. Let's jump back over though. So continue on. Yeah, Texans minus two and a half. Are you hitting it there? The Sharps hit it at one and a half. Yeah, I think you're still okay at two and a half on the Houston side. I mean, not only the Sharp, but like what I like to do is go into the app and look in the game center as well. And when you look at the handles, is that showing us the same thing that the Sharp report is showing us? And it, it is because typically you want to see that big differential between the amount of bets because the bets are close to like 50 50 but we're seeing like 80 percent of the money come in on houston which is typically the sharper money so money is typically sharper when that higher percentage of money comes in it's sharper and if that backs what we're seeing on the sharp report that just gives me more reason to like houston because i'm thinking this is definitely the sharper side on this game and historically a lot of times you'd want to go against teams that are playing teams that made it to the playoffs against teams that didn't historically in the early part of the season that been something that you want to fade those teams that made the playoffs but espn came out with that i was doing that years and years and years ago and then espn posted something on that and of course took all the value away because they made it public so what used to be a really strong play for me is no longer so i don't mind taking houston the team that did make the playoffs a year ago in this game and then when you look at the total the money has come in both the tickets and the money are just poured in on the over in this game so we're seeing a lot of money on the over hasn't really moved the line all that much so i would be cautious on that one when we're seeing all the money come in on one side yet the line i mean when you look at the total here on DraftKings, it's 48 and a half which is under where it was previously a lot of books still have it at 49 so the fact that the the money coming in has not moved this total even higher gives me a little bit of caution kind of leans me towards the underside of this game yeah. so we're smashing the texans easy play get it before it moves guys this is going to minus three by the time this game is happening i'm telling you you got to get well, that you, bet can, you can get three i mean it's already three over at bet mgm there you go so Low it's moving views. this is what i'm saying like if you were following the sharp report you'd have it at minus one and a half you know this is another one i actually took the money line because it was low at the time and i actually i'm curious to your opinion of this i took the money line at minus 130 on the texans when that when that sharp play came out and I, now i'm curious would you rather do minus 130 or a minus two minus two at what at, what, at uh, minus 110 minus two minus 110 or just take <laughs> or the minus game, game minus 130 i think the minus two is the better line there Minus two is the better line. Yeah, 20 cents. I'm doing it off the top of my head. I do have a calculator for this. And we're going to actually have that in the, the Sharp app as well. So you'd be able to do these, these calculations itself. But yeah, those are, they're not worth that many points, uh, that many that many cents. Yeah. So let's put it that way. Uh, those points aren't worth that much. Like the, of course, the the bigger jump is to go, you know, up to the three. But so what we're saying is, are the two points that you're getting or laying worth yeah. uh, 20 cents? And I, I don't believe that is the case. Those points, I, I could look it up while we're, uh, while we're doing yeah, it. So it's pretty much the minus 110 the minus 110 two is probably a better line yeah it's like a donkey better i was just like oh i'll just take him to win for minus 130 seems kind of similar so i was just like what up but and then of course possibly the math doesn't really work there but who cares we got the texans i think the texans are going to smash the colts in terms of just winning this game so that's what i want to do let's lock in a w week one how do you feel about like do you take a shot on the texans here i'm, I'm assuming you like them do you take it is, is it too sketchy for survivor yeah there's no need to dip down there i mean yeah, week one cute. don't get yeah, too cute. We, we've got there's a lot of options the fact that so many people are taking cincinnati kind of leaves it uh leaves a lot of other teams open where you, you can get some value on some other team we're looking at seattle for the circa oh as okay so. interesting are you going to be doing a show with Seslowski? i'm doing one with says yeah we're going to do it as long as as long as we're still surviving so i'll be doing one with says each week on nice. uh, we did it i think we did it last week on friday but hadn't made our determination we still haven't finalized it yet but i talked to him last night and it's looking like seattle oh and and dfs army inquiring minds and sharp app subscriber inquiring minds want to know will we have the famous the world famous renowned power ranking sheet the stats yeah yeah power rankings of course season. yeah you'll see it in the sharp app and then of course we got to get some data so we, we 
we can only really go off of what we have from last year. But once we get a couple of games under our belt, we'll get the power rankings up there. And I know you like that because you like to see where teams are performing against yeah. at, against the rush, against the uh, against the pass on defense, and then vice versa. It's been so helpful. Honestly, I think it, for me, it's been the best DFS tool I've ever come across. And we're building lots more tools, but that one is just still so focused because it, it cuts through the noise and it gives you a different result a lot of times than like what straight DVP is showing. So we have sort of a different approach than the field. And that already helps you win tournaments in DFS. Just being different. You know, I saw a great video you put out about like people kind of wanting to follow consensus. Consensus is your enemy in DFS and in betting. It's not just DFS, John. It's betting too. Consensus is not going to help you win a tournament. So I love that it's sort of a different look at DVP. Um, really great tool. Um, all right, next up, Titans at the Bears. Bears, rookie quarterback, still favored by four. Oh my goodness, they're loaded with weapons at wide receiver, at tight end now. So the Bears are pretty much loaded up. Uh, Bobby Wow has never been more excited going into a season than he is this year. You should see it. He's exuberant about the Bears. Caleb Williams, Rome Odunze, DJ Moore, even Keenan Allen. You know, people shitting on Keenan Allen, like Keenan Allen wasn't doing much in the preseason. When you're 32, John, you know how this, when you're 32 years old, you don't have to do anything in the preseason. It doesn't mean shit. I never had a good preseason after 30. Yeah, you're not going to have a good preseason. No. That's like, you know, you get a certain, you get to be a certain age. You're like, listen, I'll be there when it counts. But for now, remember uh, Larry Johnson on the Knicks? By the time he was on the Knicks, he was old, right? They didn't even play him in the regular season. They just gave him a couple minutes. You're like, this guy, is he even part of the team? Then the playoffs, all of a sudden, he's getting 25, 30 minutes a game. Like, oh, they were saving him for the playoffs. Larry Johnson, three pointer. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's not going to be the, the Did I say the name point. right? What'd you say? That? Did I say that? It's Larry Johnson, right? The, it uh, is out. Yeah, it is LJ. Yeah, yeah. LJ. Okay, I'm making sure I got that right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Hit the four-point play against the Pacers. Yep, exactly. But, you know, they're not asking him to be the number one guy. You know, when you get over a certain age, you start, I think, 30. What is it for wide receivers? Right around that 30-year-old mark is where you, you really want to, if you're certainly season-long fantasy, that's where you start to downgrade these guys. They're kind of over the hill by that point. But, yeah, no, they do have weapons. But we don't know where we're going to get here. I think there's a lot more. I think the Bears are way overhyped coming into the season. The money is actually coming. I'm surprised money he's coming in on uh, Tennessee. I think his Tennessee team's probably better than people think. I like Tennessee on the bets for this week. I don't think we have anything on the sharp report. So no sharp money necessarily on this game. I'm not seeing any square money either. But when I look at the handles in the sharp app, it's about 60-40 both on the bets and the money coming in on Tennessee. So I thought that was interesting. And if you look at the sharper side of this game is actually on the total is the under. We're getting a lot more tickets come in on the over, but kind of evening out a bit on the money side. So it's probably that looks like to me like sharper money coming in on the under, which again does make sense. Now, typically, I like to you like to uh, you know kind of fade early in the season. I like to fade rookie quarterbacks, but in a game like this, it's Will Levis is playing right, right in this one. Will Levis, Levis is playing. It's sketchy. And by the way, I found the current sharp report. I don't know what the hell I had up there before, but well, you had it off the. Uh, I think you just had the article. Yeah, this is the current for today. I'm looking at some of these numbers to find anything that we've discussed so far, and not really. Although I do hmm, Washington. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, I, I'm not sure Will Levis is good, John. Well, we, you know, we got to see him last year, but I mean, you, you can blindly kind of fade rookie quarterbacks early in the year. It has been successful over many years now. So I kind of lean here towards the Tennessee side. I think this Tennessee team, I think a lot of people are down on, them. like I said, I think they're going to bounce back here and be a better team than people think. And I also think coming into the season, I think the bears are getting overhyped. I mean, the bears are one of those teams, much like the jets. If there's a glimmer of hope, the, the fan base just goes bananas because they're just so starved to see, uh, uh, to, see, to see their team. So long well. suffering. The At least suffering the Bears have been in the Super Bowl at some point recently. I mean, we haven't even seen the Jets in a Super Bowl uh, in your lifetime. So the Jets haven't sniffed uh, a Super Bowl in my lifetime. And that's a long lifetime. It's getting longer by the minute. Oh, man, my back is killing me. You have no idea. I'm with you. Uh, no, I do have an idea. I, you have even a better yeah. idea. So, you I've know, been what's in up. Shape. Yeah. Um, but I actually just want to note again, I was I was talking about this before, but just like look at the Sharps really hit the number. <laughs> Correct. Like New England plus nine and a half down. I think it's now. Seven. We have to understand too. So the sharps are going to move lines way more than the public's going to move the line. So what happens is, and you can see if you actually scroll over just a little bit, you can see times on there and dates. Oh, you can't you see that. that up. Yeah, it's over here. Yeah. But you'll see that's when they actually put that in. And then the different colors are based on how many sharps at this book around the game. So the black is just 
one sharp and i believe the red is if we have uh two sharps on on that uh game and then blue is for three so we don't have any with that and we also got the mega sharps when there's four which is on the bottom but we don't have any uh only college games right yeah, now only college games on there right now so this, this tool it, it, no the it's the best it, it's it's not even just the best if you're a serious sports better right this is some of the stuff no one this does not exist anywhere else this is exclusively on the sharp app amongst all the other suite of tools that we have but if you're a sports better that your desire is to beat the closing line if that's you mentioned there are some sports betters that that's what they do i mean i don't know what more to show you than every single spot when the sharps are hitting the line they're beating the closing line l chargers minus three it's three and a half doesn't mean these bets are going to win there's no you know yes they win at a higher rate but the more important component here is if you're about beating the closing lines as your approach to sports betting this is certainly a great way to do it and you know you also have some other really important categories like the square position so i love to look at who the squares are on who are the squares taking there's no square nfl plays right now um oh no here we go so who are the the squares don't necessarily always lose either but you kind of want to know who the public is on and it gives you that beautiful section where you know all right public's taking baltimore let's you know pittsburgh they like the raiders i don't know why they like the rams in a tough spot they like denver on the road with the rookie quarter doesn't mean they're going to lose but the very much like they well, are one, definitely one thing you really want to pay attention to is if that's the square stuff so that's a lot of money coming in obviously from square betters on one side but when you see the line move in the opposite way that's a telltale sign that uh you know the, the squares are in bad in, in a bad yeah. spot and then you'll see that typically i look at that also on the, the uh, sharp side if we've got sharps coming in on a game and they miss the best price and the price is moving against them you got to be cautious with that as well so like if that houston game if houston flipped to an underdog and they took them at minus one and a half i'd be concerned with the houston bet the fact that it's moving in line everything lines up with what we're seeing on the sharp app as far as the handles you know when everything kind of lines up that's when you can get more confidence in firing a bet yeah little lesson here in how to use the tools on the sharp app to help originate or at least inform your betting decisions and maybe get you on something or maybe get you off some just as just as useful um all right so as far as this bears titans game goes though it's tough to narrow this down to dfs plays bears brought in a deandre swift no clue how much he's going to play i don't trust him at all titans have a combination of tony pollard and tajay spears disgusting sort of split that i don't want anything to do with and then and there's just not much going on here titan side you know they brought in calvin ridley i think deandre hopkins will play in this game so both acceptable and the bears have a terrible trio of wide receivers impossible to choose from i don't really know what to do with this game other than you know in tournaments i was kind of thinking maybe some blind close your eyes and stack you know either of quarterback with two of their guys and just kind of hope that it's right millie silly for the millie stuff it's as far as i got you <laughs> no i mean you definitely could but I, i'm kind of leaning towards the under just by the way the betting market is going so i mean that's just for bets certainly okay. in gpps you can uh you can take a shot on this game for sure yeah it's not a, it's something i'm excited about but it's something that i just feel like no one's gonna do so yeah i mean it's tough you got we've, we've seen uh, levi's levy's levis we've seen him and uh, and then a rookie terrible. quarterback so yeah it's gonna be a tricky uh, will levis is a big mayonnaise guy he likes to eat mayo straight from the jar well that's gross that i can't think of something more repulsive yeah i mean i do like mayo but I'm not eating it out of the jar, that's for sure. On a sandwich, right? Yeah, of course. I put it on a sandwich. You can't eat bread. Who are you kidding? Well, yeah, no, I don't. So I, if I get cold cuts, I actually just make, you know, maybe a little ham, cheese, a little mayo, and no bread. What do you, what do you, slap it on some lettuce? I roll it. Lettuce bun? Kind of roll it up. Oh, roll, oh, straight. I make my own. I, I, I also mm. bake my own bread, so. You're just rolling up the cold cuts and just having them straight? I'll do that, yeah. Carnivore diet style? Sort of, yeah. I mean, because okay. uh, I can't have the gluten, but I'll make my own gluten-free bread, you know. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Here's a game that that's interesting and I think has potential to play a lot of different ways. I think the field doesn't know what's going on. I think the the sports book's not sure what to make of it. That's the Vikings at the Giants. Vikings are now one and a half point road favorites at the Giants. Sam Wise, the scared Darnold at the helm for the Vikings. Um, Justin Jefferson, still sort of the stud that he is. Doesn't matter who's at the helm. He gets it done for the Vikings. Running back situation, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, uh, new to the team, unless I'm brain farting this one. That's going to be weird to remember all season long. With the backup Ty Chandler on the Giants, we've got the addition of Malik Neighbors and my boy Daniel Jones, who sometimes wins you a million dollar tournament when you play him. You just got to deal with the fives and the sevens that he gets you in between. But every once in a while, he wins you a million. He's got Malik Neighbors now. He's got at the running back position, um, Wandell Robinson still there and a uh, new tight end just named the starter, Theo Johnson. Probably haven't heard that name before, John. I know it because I'm deep drafting best ball leagues, even as we speak. And that guy's your round 19 tight end pick. 
pick, maybe round 25. So as far as the spread goes here, I don't know what to make of it. This one's tough. I am not touching this game, but John, you probably know. So what's the deal here? Who are we playing? Uh, the Vikings, are they real with Sam Darnold there? Uh, Giants, can they get back to sort of that team that Cinderella it to the playoffs a couple of years ago? Yeah, I don't see why the Giants are a, a dog in this game. So I, I kind of like the Giants plus one and a half minus. You can get a minus 105 over on FanDuel if you want to shop around a little bit. They do like that number. You could get uh, plus 107 on the money line. I'm fine with that as well over on uh, over on FanDuel. But we've seen more of the money coming in and more tickets coming in on the Minnesota side. As far as the total goes on the game, um, it's more money, more tickets on the over. Looks like we might be seeing some sharp money come in on the under. So I think that's kind of the way I see this game going as well. I like the Giants kind of grinded out type of game, low scoring. I mean, the Giants would be my bet though in this game for sure. You know, when you get, talked about rookie quarterbacks, but you got to be careful with veteran quarterbacks switching teams. They also start fairly slow. So I think I'm anticipating kind of fading some of those quarterbacks here early in the season. Darnold would be one of them. I, I just don't see, I'm I'm higher on uh, Daniel Jones. You've got Daniel Jones coming off injury. I mean, I know he's not getting drafted very high except, if, if at all. I mean. You know, he's my number one drafted best ball quarterback. I love it in best ball because of yeah. the upside that he gets for you and that, you know, in the best ball formats, I think that works out really well. I think it's big bounce back year for Daniel Jones as far as uh, fantasy goes. So I think he's going to be fine. I mean, I, I understand the weapons that, that they've lost, but I think Daniel Jones went healthy. He can get you some points. He's going to run a lot. He's probably going to run more this year than he has maybe, but let me, you know, let me see I'm if always can... looking for always looking for a guy who's got running ability in fantasy because those are the guys with the most upside. Check this out. See, you want to talk about a guy who you can play in tournaments, right? Dallas, terrible, gets a six. Week two, Arizona, 35 fantasy points. One of the biggest fantasy quarterback scores of the entire season for anyone. And then trash, 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 right? So what's the story with Danny Dimes? Every once in a while, he will win you a Millie Maker tournament contest. That is what he does. Um, Is it going to be this week? I don't know. But if you're giving me a Millie maker winning score once every five or six weeks. I'm playing you in the middle maker every fucking week because he's going to be 2% on. And you know who he had a wide receiver last season when he put up that 35? No one. There were actually no wide receivers on the team at all. He threw it to himself. There were no players on the team. Nothing. Now he's got a couple of names. So I like it. I'm, I love that you're betting them or picking them to win the Giants in this game as well. You know, on the flip side, you know, Sam Darnold saw the ghosts at the Meadowlands. That's where the ghosts were. There hasn't been an exorcism. They're still there. Those ghosts still exist at the Meadowlands lands for him. We see in defensive backs everywhere on the field that aren't even there. Safeties just coming out of the clouds. But I still think Justin Jefferson can do just fine here. Yeah, I like a I like a Daniel Jones to Malik Neighbors week one Millie Maker stack. Why not? All right. Wait, one last question. Official play? Giants? Official? Yeah, I'll have the Giants. Yeah, I'll have the Giants yeah. as a play. Get that in the Sharp app Discord as well. So let's move on to the Steelers at the Falcons. Falcons new look offense about to be debuted. Kirk Cousins, Drake London, Unleashed, Kylie Pitter unleashed Bijan Robinson unleashed or maybe not I don't know um Steelers coming in with a new look offense as well new offensive coordinator Arthur Blank you may remember him from Atlanta Falcons shitty ass offense fame from last season the man likes to run the football John he's old school he's from the 90s he's like established run that's Arthur Blank and so the Steelers are that's what they're going to do they're going to run the football Russell Wilson there to throw bombs I have a feeling it's going to remind me of the Seattle offense from years ago where they want to focus the run and if they fall behind a little bit They'll try to let Russell Wilson uh, cook a little bit back there. But uh, I mean, if you've seen Russell Wilson lately, he's cooking up, you know, mac and cheese. He's cooking up like spaghetti and ketchup. It's not good. You ever cook up a little spaghetti and ketchup? You ever have that? Mrs. Mrs. Statsational, Mama Statsational, little pasta with a ketchup sauce. Uh, come on. That's what Russell Wilson's cooking up. I, we didn't even have like a jar, like a jarred sauce in my life, like proper jar, jars. You never had jarred sauce? Putting ketchup. Yeah, I don't even want to get to it. I saw a guy put ketchup on, uh, on pasta no, in the listen, office one time. If I, I do a deconstruction constructed hamburger okay you take the hamburger you break it up into little pieces a little ketchup a little hamburger sauce but instead of the bun use a little spaghetti listen if you call it a deconstructed hamburger maybe that's better I mean, listen i made burgers yesterday i mean it doesn't take much to make yourself a little something special a special type of sauce where you could do if you like mayo we talked about mayo i mean i did a sriracha it's a little sriracha oh. mayo a little ketchup salt I pepper have... i'll put in some pickle juice into there and just make a little you can make i, I don't know i do i just come up with something i, I have a burger sauce 
sauce I make. Pat, catch up. I, have, I have a burger sauce I make for my uh, smash burgers, and I call it the secret of my success. You're always marketing, even when you're not selling anything. Yeah, it's not even for sale, guys. Yeah. I, I know, you know, but link in the description below if you guys want to get yeah. the secret of my success. Uh, Jar, I, I, I don't think anyone wants your secret sauce. No, they don't want my <laughs> no. secret of my success. I was so proud of it when I came up with it, but you, you're less impressed than I was hoping. Yeah, it's good. Um, DFS plays, you know, B. John Robinson, sure. Yeah, okay. It's a mystery how much he's going to be used. Tyler Algier waiting in the wings to vulture all his tutties. Did it last year. Probably going to do it to us again, but maybe not. Maybe they'll unleash the beast, the beast, Bijan beast, beast. No, I'll keep trying. Maybe they'll unleash the beige. And I'm excited to see what Drake London does this season with Kirk Cousins at the helm. So like, there's a lot of interesting things here, but I do think both teams are going to play a conservative. Lots of running. No one's going to give too much of a shit about running up the score, which probably doesn't lead to the most fantasy goodness that we could hope for. So it to me would be like a less likely outcome that we're we're getting like a smash game from a Kyle Pitts. The Steelers have an elite cornerback on the team whose name escapes me right now, but there is a corner on that team that's really, really good. But at the same time, I think Kyle Pitts might be the best matchup for the Falcons in the passing game. So I'm interested in Pitts a little bit. I think Pitts will be very, very popular. He's one of the lower cost studs. If you compare the Kyle Pitts price on DraftKings to FanDuel, Kyle Pitts on DraftKings is priced the same as the Evan Ingram in Joku Kincaid group, but here he is priced a thousand dollars below them. So I love the saving that you get on pits on DraftKings relative to FanDuel in week one. That's as far as I can take it, John. Fitness game, Falcons side. I actually like the Pittsburgh side on this game, and that's the square side as well, according to the sharp report. But yeah, I'm I'm leaning uh towards towards Pittsburgh. The Falcons, I think, are another team that's been a little overhyped here early in the year. I think obviously Russell Wilson's tenure at Denver has left a bad taste in people's mouth. So I just think we're getting a good price on uh, this year. I love Tomlin as as a coach, and uh, I think getting the hook here plus the three and a half, well worth it. I'm going to take a shot with the Steelers. Okay, okay. And that total? Yeah, the total on this one, I think the under is the play again in this guy. I know I, I, start, I started this off like kind of looking at some overs, but I, I do like quite a few unders this week, and I would say the uh, the Steelers, this this game is going to probably, the way we're looking at it, it looks like sharper money's coming in on the underside, and I could see that being the case with this game. When you get two, again, you got two quarterbacks, new teams, it does take them a while to really start clicking, and I uh, would not be surprised on the under. How do you feel about Najee Harris to score a touchdown? I think that's uh, in the plus 140 range right now. I mean, those are always typically terrible bets. Yeah. But I do think, you know, on the whole, I think Najee Harris touchdowns will be up this year. Let me I think, ask you this. I do think he gets in. Let's continue on the betting topic for a second because I, I have thoughts on this. You said to score a touchdown is a terrible bet. I'm assuming you're saying that because you can't score, you can't really bet them to not score a touchdown. So you don't really know where the value is. Is that the issue? And are you hearing, I'm hearing that some of the books are dropping some will not score a touchdown type plays uh, now and will be able to sort of well, see both sides of those. Yeah. If, whenever you have a one way market, uh, typically, you know, will something have, will the player hit a home run? Will a player score a touchdown? They could juice those a lot more. It's hard enough. Most people don't really see the juice or really pay attention to it or the hold, as we say, on a game or on a prop. And when they only put a one way market on there, then you really don't know what the hold is. You're, you're kind of taking a guess at it. But when you, all you have to do is just do the math on these. Don't even worry. I mean, there's so many projections out there. If you go to DFS Army, you're going to get projections on uh, on all these players. Just look at what the projection is and figure out how often that player is going to score a touchdown. You know, just look at a player on the season. If he's plus 140, you're saying he's plus 140 in the... Uh, let me the, let me double check market. it here because I don't have the app open in front of me. I'll, I'll, I'll pull that actual number out here yeah. in a second. So just give me a second, but let's assume it's around plus 140. That's right. So he's got to score basically that, that would be 42% of the time. In 42% of games, let's say, he's going to score a touchdown. So are you saying... So if you if you take that over a 17 game season, that's seven touchdowns. And then when you take into account some of those games, he's going to score multiple touchdowns. Is that going to happen? Is Najee Harris looking at like nine or 10 touchdowns this season? If you look at his future, I haven't looked at, I think his, but his season long touchdown number is well below that. So just in general, I mean, how many touchdowns did he score last year? If we look, I could bring him up, but yeah, let me pull that up. It wasn't 10. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's coming, he scored eight touchdowns last year. So you got to figure he's scoring once every other game. Well, again, like you said, if, if he if he throws a two touchdown game in there, it kind of throws the numbers off as well. There uh, was one, two yeah. touchdowns against Seattle. So basically, he scored in seven of seventeen games he scored. So I mean that's that's close to the number. But yeah, typically they're just juicing those so much that and they're bets that people love. People love the touchdown bet because oh, yeah. plus money typically, unless you're betting McCaffrey or something like that. Typically getting plus money, people love them. They'll play them in like crazy parlays as well. You know, if you're throwing some lottery tickets out there, you're playing for small money. I mean, do what you want, have some fun. Sharp betters are not betting those bets. Okay. All right, let's move on. Uh, Panthers at the Saints. Saints, four-point home favorites in that 
game. 41 and a half point total. Uh, Panthers coming in with, you know, slightly new look offense. Not really. They added Deontay Johnson, I guess. Some tight end, you know, Jatavian Sanders, whatever. They, they drafted a tight end, probably not going to start. Uh, beyond that, it's pretty much the same stuff as last year. They they drafted a rookie running back. He won't be ready for another six to eight weeks. So you're talking about Chuba Hubbard getting all of the carries or most of them for the Panthers in that game. Saints also, not much change in here. Just, just a stagnant offense compared to last year. Still got Derek Carr, meh, at the helm. You've still got, you know, Chris Olave looks good. And, and then from there, it's just uh, sort of I, the Rashid Shahid. There's not much going on at wide receiver for them. Taysom Hill and Juwan Johnson coming up the tight end spot. You'll see probably a lot of Taysom Hill in this game just because they just lack weapons. And Alvin Kamara, old man Kamara and old man, you know, uh, Jamal Williams at running back. It's just a stagnant team. I don't know. They just came back just like last year thinking we weren't that good last year. Let's do it again. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll improve. But and I, I just thought there was value in the market on the Saints just because of how over how crazy people are getting on the Falcons. Bad division. No, Panthers. Pan uh, oh, oh, in the um, on the division. As, as far as the division. Yeah, yeah. As far yeah. As the division goes. I, I, and, I do like I agree with the Falcons thing, though. I think that I mean, everyone loves them, but yeah. I'm like, it's just way too. I'm not saying the Falcons won't win that division. They probably do. But I, I, you're getting a good price on the Saints and even Tampa if you want to go down that road. But I, I just the Saints are getting uh, way undervalued. Now, in this game, I do like the Panthers maybe win the game. I like the plus four. Uh, we're not seeing anything necessarily on the sharp report, but this is a spot that I do like Carolina on my model. It does fall into the old system where we used to get the uh, playoff team against a non-playoff team. So we'll see how that goes this year. And that used to just be blind, just bet that and you'd make fortune. But we're looking at the, on the spread, pretty much 50-50 as far as where the bets are coming in and the money. The total is where it's interesting. I mean, the entire market taking the over on this game. So there, it's at 41 and a half. I'm seeing 42 at some books, 41 and a half here um, on DraftKings. And let me see where the where the uh, total is moving. I don't think it's moved all that much yet. The uh, Well, it did. So it went up from 40 to 42. So it's kind of in line with where the money's going. But yeah, so the public, I don't know about any sharps, but the public is betting this thing to go over quite heavily. I'd go the other way. I don't get it. I think Bryce Young is just a hype machine. Every He's, he's coming out of camp with hype. I don't buy it. I think the Saints defense is the play here. Of all the plays, Saints defense is the best play coming out of this game in terms of a DFS play. Um, yeah, I'm not buying that the Panthers or that Bryce Young with his tiny hands is going to get any better than he was last year. I think, um, you know, he's a rookie, should get better, but I saw nothing. He's Kenny Pickett 2.0. Sorry, Panthers fan. I apologize. Send all your hate mail to statsational at gmail.com. Direct it to that Panthers fan. You know who's typing up a hate mail right now? Josiah. It's like, nope, I'm not dealing with that. Broncos at the Seahawks. Seahawks, six-point home favorites. Broncos busting out with Bo Nix. Could be an exciting young player. Does it all. I like Bo Nix. Seattle bringing back the old crew, Geno and company. You know, Ty Lockett's still there. DK Metcalf still there catching touchdowns. Jack Smith and Jigba getting better, but you know, there's three of these guys. No one can ever make value for DFS. Too many of them. The wide receivers are too many. The guy I like on Seattle a, a little bit is the running back. Why can't I remember his name? Oh, another brain fart. Um, Yeah, uh, Kenny Walker. Probably going to score a touchdown in this game. I see it. I see it happening. As far as the Broncos side, Cortland Sutton, J Jamal, I don't really like anything going on there. I kind of like Bo Nix a little bit, but it's hard to pair him up. Like I said, Cortland Sutton, I guess. I don't know. Not too exciting there. But what about this line? Minus six for Seattle. Seattle, not that great of a team, John. Are they undervaluing uh, Denver with a new quarterback? Is this sort of a hangover from last year and just how boring they were? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's creeping up. My model normally, uh, my, my model likes Denver in the game. I like Seattle, though. Kind of like going against my model. Again, it kind of plays into the rookie quarterback. And we're seeing what appears to be. Now, when, we don't have the confirmation of this on the sharper board, but when we look at the handles, I mean, it's two to one bets for Denver and it's like four to one money on the Seattle side. So it's a big disparity here where the money's coming in and we're seeing the line kind of creep up. When I was on that live in the Discord last night with Anthony, Anthony likes the uh, Denver side, I believe, on this game. Now I'm trying to think. I think he was saying, yeah, he was waiting for, he was hoping to get seven on this game. And uh, that's where he thought it would be interesting to uh, take Denver, which I agree. I think if it ever got to seven, you're going to see a lot more uh, Denver money come in. But I mean, there's a big swing here. Do you get five and a half over at Caesars still, minus 110? And then there's some book, but juice to the, on the Denver side of this game. So there's a bit of a spread. And I, I mentioned when you're in between those key numbers, sometimes you're going to see that really hard for it to be when we're at the key number to see books be too far off. You're just going to see juice change there. But so I, I kind of I'm leaning on the uh, the Seattle side here might even actually have a play on there. I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see some line movement. That'll probably be a Sunday play for me if uh, if I pull the trigger on it. The total, though, is just everyone is coming in on the over. There's another game where the money is coming in heavily on the over. So uh, we'll see there. And I mentioned 
Houston in survivor pools. I think you're getting a pretty good uh, value here. Seattle is a team that if you look at the rest of their season, not a lot of opportunities for them to be a big favorite. They do get the Giants. I forget which week it is, five, six, seventh uh, week of the season. Other than that, you're not going to have too many opportunities. So in these big survivor pools, that's kind of why we're leaning that way in uh, Circa. Although they could be an option, says was saying on Thanksgiving, not going to get into the whole rules on uh, with Circa and Survivor. But yeah, for most pools, I think Seattle, in large pools, Seattle's an interesting choice because they just don't have a lot of value in the future. Dangerous. Trusting Seattle ever is dangerous. Um, well, I like the way Bo Nix looks, uh, John. He, he's looking like, uh, he's looking pretty good. I wish, I, you know, they don't just have a lot of weapons on the coast where I, I don't I don't know how you can highlight him because it's just Cortland Sutton's never been that good and Marvin Mims, I, I'm not even sure kind of who they're rolling out or the usage of the secondary wide receivers on that team. So we're going to have to wait and see week one with those guys to really get a feel for how they're going to use their players. And like I said, the only real player who's popping for me is, again, I cannot, Kenny Walker. My brain just won't function, but Kenny Walker as a home favorite just seems like somebody who's going to score a touchdown. All right, Raiders at the Chargers. Sharp action on this game, John. The Chargers are three-point home favorites for this one. 40 and a half point total. I'm assuming that based on the fact, oh, thank you for that. Um, Based on the fact that the Chargers are favored here, minus three, I'm assuming that Justin Herbert's going to be fine and, you know, he's got the plantar fasciitis, but he should be fine. Looks like he's going to play. You know, there's a lot of concern in the Chargers, like they're going to turn into this running team and, you know, they're going to pound the rock with 1A and 1B, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. You know, I'll believe it when I see it, John. Um, As far as the Chargers offense, though goes i don't think that that transformation is going to happen like people think they've got josh palmer who's really more of a deep ball guy not a possession wide receiver um they've got the rookie lad mcconkey i like him a lot he's going to be in the slot in the keenan allen role could surprise everybody with a smash game he will have smash games i believe this season just not sure if it'll happen here on the raiders side they have chosen godner Minshew as their chosen one for 2024 weird choice if i'm given my opinion but no one asked me over there so that's who they went with as far as like Devonte adams jacoby myers they got rid of josh jacobs now and have zamir white helming up the uh running back spot i don't know the sharps like the chargers here john are you on board with the sharps they got him at uh let's see they got him at minus three i guess the line had moved to minus three and a half in some spots yeah it's three and a half in some spots you can still get three pinnacle still has the uh, minus 102 at three you're getting the three here at DraftKings. i still like them at the three yeah the sharps have not been able to push this one uh, much higher so that's, that's dangerous a, a bit a bit concerning but again it's is on that uh it is on that key number so it's going to be tough to get it off of the key number we'll see the public is coming in on the vegas side and i think there there's enough money right now that kind of offsetting it so they're kind of leaving this one alone at three and they don't want to get off of the key number of the three so i'm still going to be backing the chargers i like it at minus three um, when we look at the total the money is all coming in uh or at least the bets are all coming in on the over and slightly more uh not more money but there's a disparity there it's like four to one on bets to the over but but only two to one on the money to the over. So that's, uh, you could take note of that where it looks like maybe some of the smarter money coming on the under on this game. So uh, I'm just see where, if we've seen much in the way of line movement. So it, the line has dropped. I mean, kind of opened at 43 has come down. So that kind of goes in line where we're seeing a lot of the money come in on the over yet that the uh, total has dropped. So that's going to be interesting to note. So that would have me and it. We're down at 40 and a half here on uh, a lot of books. So DraftKings has it minus one. Oh, yeah. Oh, the over is uh, minus one Oh eight. Yeah, the, so you can get under minus 105 at FanDuel. That's the best line right now, 40 and a half. So minus 105 if you're looking to the under. And that kind of looks the way the market's kind of telling us this game's going to go under. I'd pop over to FanDuel and get that at minus 105. Sounds like a stinker for DFS purposes. I, it's not a game I'm super excited about at all. I, I mean, there are some interesting components to it, like how focused the Raiders offense is between just like a couple of names. Oh, I didn't even mention Brock Bowers, the new tight end. I don't even know what to do with him. I'm not ready to go there yet. I don't know how much you that she's going to see. So yeah, Raiders kind of a weird situation. Maybe Zamir White, slight interest there, I guess. On the Chargers side, I got nothing. I don't like the running backs. I don't really like the quarterback. I definitely don't like most of the wide receivers. Maybe Josh Palmer, maybe not. Maybe Ladd, but probably not. So not a whole lot of interest there. I don't feel comfortable betting that game. All right, Dallas at the Browns. Exciting game, but a low total at 41. Now, two great defenses, but two, I think, possibly really good offenses too, facing off here. So I think this one can go a lot of different ways. 41 point total, a little bit low. I'm a little surprised to see the Cowboys as underdogs. I don't I don't really get it, but maybe I'm missing something, John. Shouldn't the Cowboys be sort of more respected here? Yeah, it's interesting. And the line has moved in Cleveland's favor. I believe we've got, yeah, Cleveland, uh, sharp money on Cleveland. That they got they took it at the one and a half. That's what moved this up to the two and a half. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. The sharp, um, the sharp yeah, again, reminder, sharps are on clean as uh, Cleveland at minus one and a half. It's two and a half now. So, you know, if you were with the sharps, you, you gotta, you're, you're beating the closing line at the very least. Yeah. And again, when you look at the sharp book, like pinnacle, they've got this thing basically plus money for Dallas at the two and a half. So they're, they're looking to get Dallas money. So that sharp book is telling you that they've got sharp money on Cleveland as well. So yeah, everything's kind of pointing towards Cleveland, not a major deal, but Deshaun Watson as a favorite has actually not been very good in his career, believe it or not. So that's one thing to note, but I, I do like Cleveland as well in this matchup, just because I'm going to follow the sharp money on this one. When we look at the total, again, we've got a lot of betting slips coming in on the over, but it's about 50, 50 as far as the money. So again, just a lot of this, the public generally bets overs typically, but interesting that a lot of these are coming in where the money is just coming in higher on the unders on a lot of these games and the line has moved up, right? So this opened, I believe it opened at 41 where we've got uh, 42. No, so the line has come down. I apologize. So it has moved in the direction of where the sharper money appears to be coming in, where the money is coming in. So it's 50-50 split yet we're getting that move down. So that's a good indication that that the under is in play on this game. Dude, I like Dallas here. I don't get, I'm, I'm against consensus. You know how you made a video talking about it's against the consensus. I, I don't get it. I think Dallas, uh, Cleveland is not a team that's going to beat a great defense. You know, I don't trust the Sean Watson at all, uh, at all. I just don't trust him. And I think that he'll turn the ball over. I think Dallas defense is very, very good. And I think this game is going to look ugly and people are going to feel stupid afterwards. I, I'm taking the two and a half. I, it's against, you know, there's a lot of warning signs not to do this. But I think Dallas could win. I, I don't like the plus 114. Actually, I would ask you that too. I mean, at some point, I'm definitely taking two and a half points rather than, you know, these 20 cents difference on the money line. But in general, I, yeah, I, I see it. I see the sharps. I see it all. And I don't agree with any of it. And I, I, I don't like to be out there on an island, but I think Dallas comes in and wins this game. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. I agree with you. It seems glaring. Like uh, Dallas seems like the better team here. So yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of playing the the numbers and uh, I'll be on the, the Cleveland side. I get it. I, like I said, this is a brain play and I, you know, brain plays are only worth what they're worth, but I just, I don't know. I mean, so it just seems bizarre to me. I was like, Dallas seems like uh, they're our better team than Cleveland and I don't trust Deshaun Watson. There's so many reasons. There's no Chubb here. It's just Ford. I think people are scared about Dallas not having running backs, but who cares? Throw it to CD Lamb. They don't need running backs. What do they care? All right. Last game of the main slate, John. I think this one has DFS relevance. Washington Commanders at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bucks are three point home favorites in this contest. Commanders rolling out the rookie quarterback, Jaden McDaniels. Love me some Jaden. Running quarterback could throw it, could pass it. He's got a better profile than Trey Lance, better profile than Justin Fields. And in my opinion, John, a better profile than Anthony Richardson because he was much more of a passer in college than Anthony Richardson ever was. And he's got all the legs. This guy has it all. I think Jaden Daniels is the next fantasy star. It's happening. It's happening in Washington. Remember RG Thrizzles? Your season one, destroying fantasy, just doing amazing on the same team. Why do I compare him to RG3? Only because it was the same team. No other reason. But they do a lot of the same stuff. Now, the commanders got rid of Jahan Dotson in the offseason, and now they're left with effectively just Terry McLaurin as a wide receiver. I believe one of like Noah Brown is there as well. Super sneaky tournament play if that's the guy. Let me just double check that. Uh, Noah Brown. Yes, yes, that was correct. So yeah, some super sneaky tournament potential there for me on the commander side. Running backs, a little sketch. Don't really like the commander running back duo for DFS purposes. Uh, on the Buck side, you know, the usual suspects in play, Rashad White, Mike Evans, and maybe a rejuvenated Chris Godwin. All, I think, viable for DFS in NFL week one. Not in love with Baker Mayfield's never been my guy, but you know, okay, fine as well. Um, what do you say here though it's hard to how do you judge like a rookie with the commanders plus three it's really close i'm not sure what to do as far as a bet here i mean the sharp money is on washington in this game i don't know necessarily on the sharp report but if you see the way the line's moving they are um, no, they got oh they are yeah, yeah they are on the sharp report so you look at the line movement you look at the handles um everything's kind of pointing towards the washington side on this game so uh, i've got to agree with it and take uh and take washington here on the total we're seeing a similar type of thing to the over basically 50 50 split on the betting tickets but 90 percent of the money coming in on the over we saw that push the line from 43 to 44 so yeah this game is shaping up to me kind of looks like a washington over game now i typically don't like to play the rookie quarterback so that may give me a bit of a pause but if you're just looking at betting markets they love washington in this game okay well there it is and the sharps definitely smashed that plus four number when it was there another reminder that if you have the sharp report you are frequently beating these closing lines just getting on the spots that the sharps are on why do we have it? What what do we have that's different from everyone else? None ya. None ya business. All you need to know is that it's there. We have this information that does not exist anywhere else but on the Sharp app. So make sure you're downloading the Sharp app. You check that out. Get a 
subscription there. It is totally worth it. If you bet on sports at all, uh, all those amazing tools that John has helped create and design. John, big changes coming at the Sharp app as well in the next few weeks. Something like 60 more sports books being added to the mix. Alt lines. The update the upgrades are going to be crazy coming in the next few months and uh, next weeks and months for the relaunch of Sharp 2.0. So guys, make sure to check that out. Go get signed up over there. John, any final thoughts on the main slate for NFL week one? It's the first week. Give me some thoughts on week one in general. Like what, what should we do? Should we play it light in DFS? How are you approaching it? Now, again, I, I wouldn't play it any lighter. Some people do that. Look at the betting markets as far as the prop markets to get a good feel for where you need to be playing uh, your DFS. A lot of people are going to be listening to this or single entry type of players, three max players. Take a look at the betting markets. Look at, you know, you can look at the Sharp app. I know DFS Army has the Proptimizer as well that we, that's pretty much powered by the Sharp app. Take a look there. Look at the, uh, you know, look at touchdowns. Look at the, the uh, yardage numbers for these quarterbacks. Getting the right stack is going to be the key. So figuring out that first and then figure out your running backs there. But you can go ahead. You don't have to do every single player, but you could sometimes get better. I think in the DFS Army, do you have that where you are converting the uh, fantasy? Yeah. So so our new, well, you're teasing it. So I will share our new tool that we are breaking out this season at DFS Army. And we had to wait till week one to actually have live props to really perfect it. So hopefully it'll be ready by the end of this week. Ooh, back pain. If not next week, got me, is a new tool that is going to be a fully pro prop projection focused fantasy points model where you'll have all the players, you'll see all their props for the important things that lead to fantasy production, the touchdown prop, the yardage, the receptions, all those things. We're going to have an incredible new tool and what I believe is the most accurate fantasy projection system ever conceived. It will hopefully will be live week one, but if not, probably week two. So I'm super excited to let people know that that's happening and coming very, very soon. So, and that's, of course, a lot of it is powered by Sharp and Sharp tools and a lot of stuff that we have powering the Proptimizer tool at Sharp App. So the beauty of the sister companies is everything's being improved across both sites, primarily due to the availability of information and our uh, availability to bring in so much information now that we could really get an edge on the field and do things that other sites and other locations simply are not doing yet. They'll follow suit. They always copy, but we'll get them first. And that's that's the key. I just wanted to bring up the Proptimizer real quick and talk about a couple of props. You know what my favorite props to bet are? I don't know if you know, but I like betting quarterback yardage props, overs and unders. I think that's one of the more predictable statistics. It's tough in week one. So, you know, it's a little bit tricky, but I just wanted to bring up the total passing yards and rushing and, and receiving yards. Those kind of primarily though, I want my total total passing yards props. Let's see here. There we go. So I'm going to apply that real quick. And I'm going to just a couple of quick ones that are going to pop up here, but I don't know the under on Jaden Daniels. I'm not sure. I love that one. Mahomes, the over 258 is popping for Casey Baltimore. I'm, I'm okay with that. I really actually do like that. The over for Tua at 263. Exciting week one. Josh Allen's pointing under. Bo Nix, I think was also an under here. So some really interesting ones, but my, my general sensibility for player props overall week one is to that I will take light. I think models need a week or two of data to really focus in before we get good at the projection side of it. So I'm going to give it a little bit, but there are definitely a couple spots. I like the Anthony Richardson over on rushing and passing combo yards as well. So a couple little spots like that. John, final thoughts? No, I mean, that's about it. Yeah, for me, for the props, I, I tend to stick towards like uh, receptions. I think it's easier to project those, sort of, you know, because you could kind of project targets and things like that. Yardage gets a little tricky because, you know, you just break one play and and all of a sudden you, you bust that that yard is you could have one catch for 20 or one catch for one i think just p finding the good uh receptions numbers are for me works well because that's gonna be in line a little bit more with the projections more often than yardage because there's a lot more variability when it comes to yardage numbers so for me i look at count i like counting stats and uh so we'll be getting a lot of reception type of stats props over at sharp app i'll be giving a lot of those out this year just like i do the k props that have been hugely successful for us uh, at the sharp app so be on the lookout for that we'll have plenty of props plenty of uh, bets and of course just getting the proptimizer yourself is going to be huge i i base all my prop bets on the proptimizer and then i look for the bets based on my models that i like the most so if you're playing this or if you if you have the uh the proptimizer any tool that you have i wouldn't solely just make my bet on that i wouldn't look and say oh all right kate otten i'm just going to take the under because uh the proptimizer says so you're going to want to do that if you agree with that or you have maybe something else to confirm that that 
is a, a good model, a good projection, anything like that. And he even look over at the projections over at uh, DFS Army and say, hey, what are they projecting? Not the projections based on the the uh, the sports books, because of course that's going to match what you're looking at. But just get a feel for what the guys over there think on uh, some of these players. And then if they those agree, maybe those are the ones that you want to play. Here's an easy money one for you guys. This is free money. I'm just going to give it out right here. Justin Watson under one and a half receptions. Just cash it. Easy money. Yeah, it looks like a good one on on the surface for sure. Yeah, I mean those small ones aside, but you know that's a guy who's probably going to get zero that's receptions the, more often that's than the stand standalone game. So we're going to want to have some props on that one. Definitely. Um. All right, let's wrap it up there, John. Great stuff. We'll be back every week with the game plan, DFS and bets, hanging out with John Statsation Leslie, one of the sharpest betters and top DFS players in the world, right here exclusively on the DFS Army YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, notify. John, you've been putting out great shorts on the Sharp uh, app YouTube channel as well. Really little knowledge nuggets. So make sure to check out the Sharp app YouTube channel as well. We'll link to it in the description below. If you want to sign up for Sharp app, we've got a discount for DFS Army, 20% discount for DFS Army YouTube subscribers here. That link is in the description below as well. You want to check out the Sharp app if you're betting on sports, if you bet props, if you do anything like that, if you want to learn about betting on sports, if you want to ask John questions in that Discord. So really great spot to get up to speed as far as being a sports better, an advantage sports better. Everybody can bet on sports, but can you do so with an edge, with a winning edge? Most people can't. That's what the Sharp app is about, um, helping squares become sharps. And if you're not signed up with DFS Army, this is your last chance to get 15% off any subscription promo code NFL15 up until kickoff on Sunday at one o'clock. It ends at one. So you got your chance. You got to get it in now. Check out the tools, the new projection models coming out as well. But all of our stuff, the Domination Station Optimizer, the revamped Research Station with so much new stuff and everything is now super mobile friendly as well. So we've been spending a lot of time upgrading the site, upgrading the tools. Make sure to check it out. Give us a shot. Promo code NFL15 gets you 15% off. We'll see you guys next time.